Hi, everyone. It's Joe Venary, the host of Fit Insider, the show where I talk with the entrepreneurs, executives, and investors who are redefining the business of fitness and wellness. Today, I'm joined by Bryn Putnam. Bryn is the CEO and founder of Mir, a connected fitness company that combines an interactive screen with on-demand workout content. In July, Lululemon acquired Mir for $500 million. In this episode, we talk about Bryn's motivation for starting Mir and the genesis of the idea. What differentiates the company from the growing number of lookalike products? How Bryn defines community in a digital world? And what factors led Lululemon to ultimately acquire the company? Let's get into it. A quick reminder before we get into today's show. Every Tuesday, we send a weekly newsletter filled with insights and analysis on the business of fitness and wellness. Join other decision makers and industry operators by subscribing at insider.fit.co. Hi, Bryn. Welcome to Fit Insider. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Joe. I'm really excited to chat, and I mentioned this to you um, offline, but folks really anxious and interested to hear from you, so I'm glad that we you know, got this on the schedule and maybe just to kick things off, can you tell listeners, you know, I think most folks who are listening are familiar with Mir um, and what you're working on. But for anybody who's not, can you just give them a little bit of context and bring them up to speed, maybe where things are today? Yeah, Mir is a nearly invisible interactive home gym. When it's off, it's a beautiful full length mirror. And then when it's on, it streams live and on demand classes and personal training, everything from yoga, Pilates, boxing bar, weightlifting, cardio. Um, we launched in 2018 and were recently acquired by Lululemon this summer. Yeah. And we, I definitely want to get into all of that, especially around Lululemon, but just starting maybe earlier on, when you think about you're somebody, um, came from the brick and mortar fitness industry owned a boutique studio, definitely familiar with that world. When you started to think about home fitness, in mirror the idea like why was it the screen that is something that was like the the center point of this product and company i mean i think for me um mirror was really born out of personal necessity as you said i was um the owner of a chain of bricks and mortar fitness studios called refine method that have been around for about a decade now and i started working on mirror really out of personal necessity i was newly pregnant and experienced really severe morning sickness and so the studio model just didn't work for me personally anymore. Traveling to a class, working out with people who were generally younger and more athletic than I was. Um, But the at-home model um, also wasn't really a fit. I didn't want to put a large piece of equipment into my small New York apartment. And the ways of consuming content otherwise were looking at a small phone while trying to work out or converting the television in my living room into into my fitness studio. Um, But I didn't really know at first uh, kind of how to consume the content I imagined in my mind. I went through a lot of different incarnations. I thought about um, even using like a projector screen to project content for myself. Um, And really the aha moment was um, just lucky. I put regular dumb mirrors into my fitness studios. And our members said that it was the best upgrade we had done all year. Give them feedback on their form. And that seeing themselves work out really created an immersive and um, more interactive experience. And so it was then that I kind of realized all the components that I'd built in my studio could be put into mirror and solve the footprint issue of traditional at-home equipment. Right. So really around space, that interactivity, um, having something that maybe is a better experience than the television or tablet. Um, a lot of times, you know, now when you think about it, looking across the landscape, the mirror itself is kind of foundational to all the different pieces of equipment. Could you maybe just elaborate on or like how do you think about the television or a tablet not being sufficient enough that we need another screen that is like devoted to exercise? Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, tablets or or televisions are really good for passive entertainment where you are sitting back and consuming. But when you're talking about, um, a way of consuming content while doing, um, interactive or immersive content, there's just something about being able to see yourself and your reflection, as well as your instructor, the community, um, your personalized exercises, uh, your metrics, your feedback that just provides, um, really a unique experience that's very compelling. So I really do believe in a purpose-built, dedicated display for fitness. And I think that the mirror is, is really the perfect conduit for that. Right. And I, I kind of alluded to this. When you think about now how the fitness industry, especially connected fitness, has evolved, 
there's a lot of m- mere copycats, right? Or mere lookalikes, if you want to be a little bit more uh, kind of friendly about it. And you've seen that the um, from Peloton to Icon Fitness to Echelon, not only have some of them launched competitive products, but around their bikes and other technology, like they're going to court, they're suing one another. There's a lot of lawsuits around this. Are there, or maybe why aren't there patents related to Mir that could be protected? Um, well, we do have a, a pretty robust um, patent portfolio that is um, large and growing. I mean, I think in terms of where I spend my time or I spend my team's time is is really focused on on what our members want and need and what what they um, are expecting from us. So, um, you know, there's certainly a lot of uh, a lot of noise in the space at times. But I think if you're able to really focus on your member and how to serve them, uh, you will ultimately succeed. Yeah, maybe can we dive into that a little bit? So if you're thinking about competition, you kind of said there like, hey, Amir, we're just going to focus on the consumer and, and serving them and maybe differentiating yourself that way. When you think about the competition, what makes you better or defensible when you look at this like growing category? I mean, I think fundamentally, you know, convenience is table space in this space. I think that uh, variety, the versatility of Mir, which is a, a platform first approach versus a product first approach where you're investing in, in one way of working out um, enables us to better serve um, the evolving trends and tastes in fitness, but also the evolving needs of our members as, as they grow. Um, and then fundamentally the, the footprint the ability to really have um, an experience that uh, fits within your home and your lifestyle rather than uh, converting your home into into a gym, which is um, either not feasible or not desirable for many people, um, I think is really unique. So I think there's um, sort of that combination of uh, versatility footprint and then ultimately the unique community that we're building um, that's really powerful and comes from frankly, just having spent really my entire life in this space, you know, I've done everything from uh, fold the towels to answer the phone to to teaching the classes. And I think uh, hopefully that um, that member love really extends through everything that we build. Yeah, I think that's a really important perspective as someone who also got my start uh, in the fitness industry you know, kind of in the trenches, one-on-one personal training, group fitness, owned a gym, the whole deal. So uh, it's definitely a unique perspective that maybe sometimes gets lost in the the technology or the connected fitness aspect. Um, when you think about like the different modalities, the content itself, the formats, uh, how are you able to kind of stay at the forefront of that? How do you think about the content that's getting developed in the programming that goes along with it? What's really exciting, I think, about being a content platform versus a product is the development cycles can be incredibly fast. So we own not just um, the content delivery mechanism, the mirror, but also all of our own original content, which means that when we learn something about our member and their need, we can develop and iterate really quickly. So um, early on, we learned that we had a much larger segment of uh, not just senior exercisers, but um, disabled exercisers. And so we launched chair content in um, really a few weeks. Um, Similarly, with the advent of COVID, we found there was um, many of our members using the mirror for full family content, working out, you know, at the same time as their kids, even using the mirror for, for home gym classes. And so we really built out our family fun program as well as developed uh, buddy content we performed with others. Um, and I think that is um, a unique uh, ability to really learn and iterate quickly when you own a vertically integrated platform and you also take sort of that platform first approach. Sure. Yeah. I think that's important. How, I think a couple questions maybe that stem from that, just given the COVID and the impact of that, how have you had to change maybe how the content is getting filmed? So maybe you're noticing these different trends that are developing on the platform. You want to turn around and get something out quickly. How have you been able to produce this content, shoot it, get it deployed in a world where like we really can't be around each other in the studio or a studio being like the studio setting or even like a video studio producing the content? What does that look like right now? Yeah, I mean, at the start of COVID, we made the decision to move our uh, production facilities into our instructors' homes, which was um, an incredible learning experience, I think, for me and my team. Uh, we had instructors, many of whom who had 
left New York City to remote places um, to be with families or um, to, to, to move out of the city. And we had to set up full live streaming production studios for them. Um, so we, you know, evolved our technology and developed um, uh, these sort of in-home live production studios for our, for our staff, uh, which we used throughout the, uh, the, the first months of COVID. And then eventually, um, we, we moved back into the studio with a uh, pretty strict, uh, safety protocol in place. Um, but our operation is, is, um, just sort of inherently very socially distanced and lean because our instructor is, um, filming in a black box environment. So they're not teaching, uh, you know, they're not teaching participants. Um, but it was definitely a, a real learning experience for us. Sure. And I want to come back to COVID, but another question that stands out when you think about the content itself, the instructor, one thing that we've seen, you know, Mir is kind of focused on different modalities and not necessarily centered around the equipment, right? And we've seen different products launch with some type of screen, some type of content, and now starting to add, whether it's like a tonal with strength training, a uh, form as a company that recently launched in the space, even kind of like icon fitness now launching with like strength training as a part of that. How do you think about like the equipment aspect with the mirror and programming? Is that important? Is it a direction that maybe you'll get into or is it not important or interesting for you? I mean, I think the mirror is designed to be a conduit for content and community and it's designed to make any equipment that you have in your home or want to purchase um, or have access to really come alive. I think a lot of people have experienced what it means to um, invest in a large piece of fitness equipment and then find that you aren't inspired to use it or you don't know what to do with it. And so the center of what we do really is the, the content of the community. Um, but we want to be really um, equipment agnostic. So if you are someone who wants to use kettlebells with your workout or wants to use... Um, you know, so suspension straps with your workout, we can, we can really serve your needs um, and continue to evolve those needs over time. Right. And then we mentioned to this point a couple of times, obviously COVID changing things pretty drastically, accelerating yeah. the adoption of at-home fitness and, you know, maybe also accelerating this shift towards at-home fitness that certainly, you know, companies like Mir had already shown there was an interest for and an appetite for. Um, earlier this year, I think it was a Forbes article that you were quoted as saying it was Christmas in April. Um, so sales were up, people were working out at home. Um, but also there's likely a lot of fear and uncertainty around what was happening besides the content creation piece. Can you just talk about like what was going through your mind at that time? You know, just trying to keep up, trying to manage all these different shifts and run the company at the same time. Yeah, I mean, we had a you know a number of challenges. We were already, as you said, like a very fast growing business, which means that you're you're building your team and you're expanding your supply chain um, really, really rapidly. And then when you do that in a COVID environment, you're doing things um, like setting up a new factory. So in our case, our, our factory operations are in Mexico, but we set up um, a new factory um, in the United States during COVID to ensure that we had um, redundancy. Um, we were sort of on a, on a daily basis dealing with changes to our, our supply chain and adapting to them. Um, similarly, when you're trying to uh, hire into a fast growing company and you can't um, meet prospective employees, um, it creates um, you know, challenges. So learning how to adopt our, um, our processes to, to, uh, to digital was, was definitely um, interesting. Um, but I think my team you know, did a wonderful job and, and we were able to kind of continue our momentum. Um, and it's, you know, we're fortunate that we are a company where all of our challenges were, were positive and due to growth and, and, and not due to contraction. Yeah. Around the growth piece, just what type of impact did you see in the early days in terms of like an uptick in traffic to the site, maybe usage of people at home and then new sales um, kind of coming through? Yeah, certainly. So, you know, I think we, Lululemon has, dis, has disclosed in their latest earnings call that, you know, we'll generate over $150 million in revenue this year, which was um, an increase on the, the estimate that we had provided earlier in the year. Um, we certainly saw the number of workouts per household grow um, over 70% during the peak COVID months. Um, 
lots of sort of interesting things. You know, our participation in mindfulness genres grew over 40% as people, you know, start started to really feel, I think, the stress of, of this difficult period. Um, the number of workouts, uh, the number of users under 20 grew about 5x during COVID as many young people kind of returned home to be with their families. Um, so there's a lot of um, sort of interesting COVID-related trends uh, uh, that happened. So that that sales are going up, the usage is going up. Um, at some point, Lululemon reaches out in, to gauge the interest. I know that you had previously had a relationship with them both as an ambassador. Um, they were an investor in the company. So there's there's already a relationship. But when did they initially reach out and what were those conversations like? Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, I've had a relationship with Lululemon since the very beginning of my, my fitness career. Um, Lululemon educators and store managers were really some of my first members at my fitness studio and um, some of the early champions of my of my business. Um, and then we reconnected um, about a year before the acquisition um, and they became minority investors in Mir and we started to work on a bunch of things together. Um, the first was the launch of meditation, which was our first mindfulness genre and um, began to think about uh, other ways of, of bringing sort of their incredible global footprint together with Mir's um, digital community. And then really it was, it was before COVID when we began to think about um, the possibility for a, for a deeper partnership. And so the acquisition was, uh, was really well underway once, once COVID hit. Um, but obviously it's, you know, it was very <laughs> exciting to, uh, to work on an acquisition in the middle of a, a global pandemic. Sure. Yeah. Digging in a little bit more when you talk about, you know, there's this obvious overlap with the content piece. There's obvious overlap with their apparel, um, potentially more programming. Where does Mir fit into Lululemon's strategic plan? And, you know, are they selling you on the idea? Are you pushing back and saying, hey, you know, we want to be the next Peloton for lack of a better comparison and kind of do this thing on our own? Like, how did those two things come together? And for maybe the insights around other entrepreneurs who are thinking about or in the future get approached about M&A, just like take us behind the curtain a little bit. Like what were those conversations like and what was going through your mind as that was happening? I mean, I think there are a lot of acquisitions that are about, um, you know, uh, efficiencies or um, acquiring IP or figuring out ways where, um, you know, one business can really subsume or um, absorb another business. And this was very different in that I think both parties really felt like one plus one would equal five. And that uh, there was a really unique opportunity to unite Lululemon's global retail footprint, um, their really beloved brand, and, um, you know, all of their just incredible resources and infrastructure with Mir's um, fast-growing digital community to create this uh, unique omni experience. You know, it's very unusual to have a brand that can build a connected community across digital and physical in such a powerful and authentic way. Um, and then I think ultimately any kind of marriage like this has to be built on relationship. And so a relationship that was really a decade in the making, um, I think helped to, to bring everyone um, a lot of comfort and excitement. And, and maybe you've already answered this in the, you know, kind of thinking about it as one plus one equals five. Uh, I think that that was well put. Um, but was there a moment or a determining factor where you were like, okay, we're going to do this that puts you over? Or was it like that combination of things that like you ultimately got there? Um, you know, I think uh, a, a few members of my leadership team, we went to to Vancouver uh, to meet with the Lemon leadership team. And we kind of sat around a table uh, looking at a whiteboard and, um, just really shared ideas about what we could build together. Um, and there was just so much excitement at some of the ideas and um, such a great um, like energy and uh, attitude in the room. And I think that was when I really um, kind of made the decision that, uh, that this was a, something that I wanted to pursue. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, moments in your startup when you uh, are feeling like excitement and there's great energy, but there's something really, really powerful when two businesses um, together and can really run fast against an opportunity. Yeah, I'm sure that was exciting. And 
I know it was a little while ago now, but just congrats again on the acquisition, the kind of success when you are an entrepreneur who starts your own thing and you raise money. Like at some point there's, there's gotta be a liquidity event. Um, Maybe it's going public and then running it into the the long term, but also an acquisition of this caliber, you know, says tremendous things about Mir, you as an operator, and really validated the industry where people, you know, don't remember this right now too often, but not a year ago, Peloton and the idea of connected fitness was a joke. It was like, this is a trend. Could this possibly be something that people do? And now it's as if we jumped five years into the future. Um I'm curious, even in this short amount of time, how does Mir as a private company look different from Mir, you know, by Lululemon? Um, I mean, I think, you know, the, the most exciting thing has been we launched in 18 Lululemon stores for holiday this year, um, which is an incredible feat, uh, I think, for, for me and for my entire team to be able to walk into you know, Lululemon flagship on Fifth Avenue here in New York and to see the brand, um, you know, blown up big time um, in, a, in a global flagship um, was incredibly exciting. And that kind of opportunity to be able to, to do that sort of a retail store rollout in such a quick amount of time with an eye towards hundreds of stores next year um, is really exciting and, and definitely a sign of the acceleration we anticipate via the partnership. And then your involvement, what does that look like Day to day now, maybe in the near term, I'm sure those are conversations that you've had and thought about. Um, you know, what does your role, CEO, going forward look like? Well, Mira remains an you know an independent subsidiary, and the the sort of um, direction for integration uh, has always been with an eye towards you know as I said one plus one equaling five so um, I think everyone is being very thoughtful and careful about uh, ways in which um, the two teams can co-create and where it makes sense and it's exciting and then otherwise you know Mir continues to be an incredibly fast moving uh, startup and you know we don't see that changing anytime soon sure and to that point around one plus one equaling five, there's, there's been a lot of speculation externally. I know maybe I've been a part of that too. And some of the content that we've created about how these two companies go together, um, what it looks like to build this digital community, what it looks like to have mirror sold in the stores. Um, obviously Lululemon talks a lot about the sweat life, um, and really embodying that lifestyle brand. But what are some of like the actual priorities and initiatives that you're focused on that will be like, this is, this means or indicates success for this acquisition, even in the, in the near term. Well, I think the, the store role, as I said, is, um, you know, one of our main focuses for holiday and early into the new year. Um, we launch our first set of, um, uh, connected community features this holiday. So enabling our members to actually see each other, uh, during the workout to, uh, compete with each other via face-offs or send high fives and encouragement, um, for, for a job well done. Um, and so really beginning to, um, help, uh, continue to, um, flesh out and, um, amplify the, the burgeoning community through our technology, um, is a focus and a, and a priority for us. And then how that translates into, um, you know, physical events and experiences, I think will be exciting, uh, in the new year. Yeah. I think that community piece is going to be super interesting. How, I think it's, it, it comes up a lot, right? So talking to different founders of not only connected fitness companies, but anything digital right now, community is such a essential part of the workout experience in boutique studios to run groups, gyms, what have you. How do you think about community digitally and maybe how are you translating that into Mir, but also like the broader Lululemon environment? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, traditionally for, for much of the 20th century, if you ask someone to define community, they would probably give you an answer that had to do with place, you know, with physical location, um, your community at your school, in your neighborhood, in your town. Um, and then I think recently I think the sort of the notion of community has really evolved and changed. And I think now it's really about um, something someone chooses for oneself through like really a process of self-discovery that leads them to feel um, 
a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging, a sense of uh, togetherness. It's really, um, it's a choice. It's an active rather than passive community. And I think that's what's really exciting about the community that we're building at, at NIR is the ability to, to find your tribe. And for some people that will be, you know, their family or their friends. For others, it's, um, you know, meeting someone in a different city, a different state, or ultimately a different country um, that helps to... Um, helps you to really feel uh, connected. And so the ability of, of technology to help you uh, find that community you choose is incredibly powerful. And, um, and that's a vision that we're really invested in. Yeah. Is, it, is that happening currently in the platform? I know a lot of different companies are using, they're actually using like Facebook groups, right? So there are a lot of folks I talk to are like, go into the Facebook group, just see how crazy engaged everybody is. Um, but it's, it's not necessarily taking place within their platform. So is there a way for me to, you know, message and work out with friends now inside of me, or is that kind of what you're working towards now when you say rolling out community features? Yeah, so this the starting this month, this holiday, all of these features have begun to roll out. So the ability to find and connect with friends, uh, share workouts, share your progress. Um, then during the class, uh, the ability to turn on your camera and and uh, see you know friends and the rest of the mirror community. And then into the new year, um, the two sort of core features: uh, the locker room, which allows you to actually communicate with your classmates and your instructor before and after class, uh, like you would IRL, um, and sweat dates, the ability to actually create a, a private class event for a community of your choosing. Um, so I think there's a lot of things that, you know, you'll start to see come to life on Mir. But as you said, you know, we've been uh, fascinated to date to see how our community has really built their own, um, built their own platforms for themselves using, you know, as you said, Facebook groups or Instagram, um, and then how those have translated into physical meetups and, um, and really deep friendships. And so we're really excited to be able to give our members more tools to build those relationships. Sure. It's a huge opportunity, but still, you know, early innings in terms of like what this community can become and how it translates online and offline. Uh, It'll be interesting to see. One thing that you've touched on, I think in the past is this idea that fitness was just one, maybe vertical that Mir would focus on. So I think previously you've said telemedicine, fashion, even that they could fit into this. Uh, Is that still on the roadmap, focusing on different content verticals or now given the Lululemon acquisition, like this is going to focus more on being a purely fitness product. Yeah, our, our, our mission remains the same, which is to create experiences that connect you to a better version of yourself. And we've always said that um, our goal is to continue to iterate on those experiences as we, we build our community. So you should look to us to continue to expand um, the types of experiences that we create as we grow. But, you know, as you said, we're very much in the early innings. We're a two-year-old, two-year-old company. And then zooming out as we, we look to wrap up here, I wanted to get your sense of, you know, when you created this product, obviously you saw something shifts, whether it was personal or otherwise, that the convenience factor, the form factor going into the home, there was going to be a market for that. Maybe it's it's happened a little bit faster in the scale um, than you thought, but how do you think the fitness industry is changing going forward and what becomes of all the different modalities from brick and mortar to just like a traditional gym to connected fitness more broadly? I mean, I've, I've always believed that the home is really the most convenient place to work out. You know, at home fitness, as you know, has produced numerous big businesses over the past 75 plus years. Uh, you have Jane Fonda selling 17 million copies of her her workouts in the 80s, uh, Bowflex selling 2 million units in the 90s via catalog, so pre-internet. Um, and then really throughout this period, there's been kind of key advances in technology that have enabled exercisers to get convenience combined with quality in a way that's really powerful. So you know, in the 80s, you had the development of VHS tapes that allowed for on-demand fitness at home. Um, in the 2000s, you saw this for the first time, kind of the marrying of content instruction and community with equipment. Um, And so I think we're, you know, we're in the early innings of what's possible here, but for the first time, you have this great combination of content instruction, equipment, um, kind of coming together in a way to really be able to offer 
offer quality and convenience at home. Um, and I think there's, there's, um, the sky's really, really the limit there. And what's exciting for us and, and our opportunity is how these great at home experiences then tie to, to your IRL experiences in a way that provides for, as you said, this, um, really fulfilling sweat life. Yeah. I think maybe that's a good place to wrap up that, you know, early innings and, and sky's the limit and certainly a lot of potential, um, and opportunity for Mir to do some innovative things now, especially with the Lululemon relationship. Um, as we wrap up here, we'll, we'll get you out of here on this. Where is the best place for folks to learn more about Mir and maybe, maybe get one? Yeah, absolutely. You can uh, visit us at mir.com or um, on Instagram at, and Facebook at Get the Mir. And I'm uh, Bryn Putnam on Twitter. Thanks so much, Bryn. For sure. Thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for listening to today's episode. For more from Fit Insider, visit insider.fit.co and subscribe to our weekly newsletter for insights and analysis on the business of fitness and wellness. Then go ahead and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. See you next time.